Am I in an ancient Egyptian tomb? Or are all these shells part of a Greek catacomb? You'll be surprised to know, I promise. Hello, I'm Hax. I'm a filmmaker and a storyteller. I love to travel, meet fascinating people, go to interesting places and discover amazing things. Come along with me as I search for the fascinating, the interesting and the amazing. Well, I'm nowhere on the African continent, nor am I anywhere in the Mediterranean. I'm in fact under a garden of a house in Margate, Kent. I'm three meters underground in a grotto that's been carved out of bedrock chalk and then meticulously inlaid with shells. Speculation has been going on about its purpose ever since it was discovered back in 1835, but no one knows who built it. Was it used for religious purposes? Was it a secret sect? Or even was it someone's personal folly? Um, it wasn't unheard of to have a folly in your garden, but that usually came with big stately homes. This is in a built up area at the back of Margate. The passageways lead you to a central room. And that room is almost like the interior of an ancient Egyptian tomb, but in fact, it has more overtone as an altar than a tomb that could have buried someone. And hiding in the dark behind me is a photograph of a seance It was held here in 1939. Now my research has shown that the, all of these shells are in fact from the British shores. And there's an estimated 4.6 million shells mounted on the walls in this grotto. There are dozens of designs and mosaics of the shells and each one is a symbol of something. And in the rudimentary light that you can walk through by, you can actually see the intricate work that's gone into this place. In this central chamber, it measures at least 15 feet long by 10 feet wide and at least eight foot high. So someone's gone to a lot of work to build out of the uh, chalk bedrock here. A lot of work. And when you look at the, uh, the shells, some of them have been polished by years of being touched and rubbed. We've all got to be tactile, really. We all need to kind of touch it. Well, we're probably not allowed to now. And these central uh, bulbs, I think, are sea urchin shells. But you've got mussels, uh, razor shells, um, you've got uh, whelks, um, and I think oysters. The grotto was discovered, as I've said, in 1835, and it opened to the public in 1838. And since then, there has been a steady stream of visitors.
and I can understand why. Not only have they dug out these passageways, but the amount of work that's gone in to laying each and every one of these shells. I mean, that's just enormous task. It's just mind blowing. When you walk down the initial passage, you can see the roughness of the rock. It's all just chalk bedrock. But what I love about it is that you actually walk down. And when you get to the end of the first passage, you're welcomed by this amazing arched design. And when you get here for the first time, you have no idea how deep you're gonna go or how far. And when you reach this archway, you can go one of two ways. And the thing is, there's no direction. You're not told which way to go. So you choose, but you can't help feeling a little bit nervous as to which direction you should go. Will I get lost? In truth, you won't, because the passageways are not very long, but they are extremely interesting. And you can't help wondering what these symbols are. This is definitely a feminine symbol. Could this be an interpretation of a phallus? But you don't know. There's, there's nothing about this place that's recorded. Being discovered in 1835, uh, it must have been built well before then. And that's what I find incredible. Because it wouldn't have taken a very short pe period of time to A, dig this out, but B, to lay all the shells and in patterns. I mean, that looks like an artichoke up there or a flower, this is a sunflower, and these here are clearly oyster shells. Sadly, you can see there's been quite a bit of deterioration here, but that's gonna be an ever-ending battle with something this old. And the shells are actually quite dark because when in Victorian times um, or in the early uh, 1900s uh, people would come down and see it and of course it was lit by gas so you'd have all the fumes of the gas but yeah it's just fascinating absolutely fascinating I'm going to go and see if I can catch up with Rebecca Welby who's the manager here uh, and ask her some questions Hello, my name's Rebecca. I'm the manager of the Shell Grotto in Margate. And you've been here as a manager for? Four or five years, I think it is now. Okay, I mean, you obviously love working here. Mm. What, what's your favorite aspect of it? Um, seeing something different. I come down here every day, and every day I see a different bit of mosaic that I haven't noticed before, something different that comes out. I always love seeing the reaction of visitors. I mean, there's been lots of stories about mm. how this place was discovered. Um, what's your, what's your uh, take on it? Well, we've got an interview with Frances Newlove. She was one of the children that found the grotto. Um, we have an interview with her in her later life that oh, says um, she and her brother discovered the grotto before the adults knew about it. 
um, in, I think she says a couple of years before it was then discovered by digging a duck pond. So I, I think I'd go with that. I think children, children always discover things, of always course. find odd things. So <laughs> I'd go with that. Um, now you told me that it's attached to the house, but tell us a story about about how you, uh, it was a school. You say so there was a schoolhouse at the bottom of the hill. Um, they had gardens that finished just before the grotto starts, and the schoolmaster rented the field behind the the gardens. That's got the grotto in the field behind. Um, that was uh, we we think that was purchased by the schoolmaster not long before the grotto was officially discovered. So, so we think they knew before they bought the land. And it's a mystery as to who made mm, this or exactly why. Exactly, it was found just as it is, as it is now, decorated with you know different passageways. And it's bizarre. Do you have any theories? We try not to have theories as staff. It's really easy to get stuck on a theory and really go down that that mindset. Um, I think you know if you really push me for a theory, I'd say a place of worship. Um, it's quite a devotional space, I think. There's a lot of effort that's gone into it. So worship is the only sort of simple answer to that. Absolutely. Um, and it was discovered in 1835. Mm. So uh, it was obviously made and built a lot earlier than that. Mm. What, what would your guess be? I think our common trail of thought is maybe 200 years before it was officially discovered. Um, that would sort of mitigate wow. any living memory of people being seen digging the tunnels or or collecting the shells. Okay, so and that's that's your basis, it's the fact that there's been no evidence. It, it's, our basis is pure educated guesswork. Oh, yeah. wow. How do we know that there's 4.6 million? Have you gone around and counted no, them? No, I haven't, I haven't. It's a number <laughs> we've been given. Um, we, we think there was an area of the mosaic counted and then multiplied. We have um, other figures we've been given. We have double checked. It's, we we're, were sticking with 4.6 million. We're not recounting. <laughs> and and all of the shells are uh, native to, to British shores? Yes, there are a few, a couple in the altar room at the bottom that aren't native to British shores. We think these might have been added at a later time. It, it's an old mm. grotto. Conservation is obviously now the mm. challenge. Um, uh, it's been put on the buildings at risk list with uh, the English heritage. Um, historic England. Historic so England. So in the it was put on the Historic England Buildings at Risk Register in 1999. It has now been taken off. 2012, it was taken off. Oh, okay. So we're we're very proud of that. Lovely. So you've obviously made some substantial ground. Yes. In the um, in the 80s, the land above the grotto was concreted over. The thinking was it would keep any damp out, keep any moisture out. Um, it worked out completely the opposite to that. The grotto was so damp, everything, particularly the wall behind me, actually, um, the shells just fall off the walls. It was just too damp down here. So when the current owner bought the grotto in 2001, she was... That was her, her goal was to have it taken off the buildings at risk register. Um, in 2007, there was a big conservation project started to take away all the concrete, to lay down grass above the grotto so the grotto can breathe. The chalk um, behind the walls here, behind the mosaic, was then all pinned and supported. Oh, lovely. Um, and the grotto can breathe and can sort of have a bit of ventilation. Okay. I read somewhere that the, the shells are mm -hmm. kind of a musky brown, and that's because? So the shells, um, shells fade over time anyway in damp conditions. Um, so you, it's not common to find shells sort of so old that they're still as colourful, unless they've been preserved. Um, and the grotto was gas lit in okay. the, when it was first discovered in the Victorian times. Um, and the gas just puts all over soot on the shelves. Yeah. So has it been a museum since, uh, was mm. it 1938? Uh, so, yes, 1938, um, 1838, sorry. Eight, sorry, 1838. Yes, 1838. <laughs> it opened to the public in 1838. Okay, and it's been a, a popular um, visit place really since then hasn't it yes yeah we've got um we've got really old record letters of one of the old um owner's daughters writing to the owner when she was here on a shift sort of writing a little note oh it's really boring today only 600 people and only 600 I, I know, people i know i know i used to open to sort of 11 o'clock at night it was incredible how busy they used to be we were still very busy today I bet you, yeah. but um it's it, you know 600 people back in you know, Back in the 40s, day. But yeah, it's, it's mad. <laughs> Absolutely. And what would you say that other people's impression of this is and, and why? What would you say the common thought is um, from the visitors? I think the, the common thought is 
similar sort of a worship place. Um, people are just sort of astounded. People come upstairs and either, you know, just, just don't know what to say. They're just blown away by it all. When you try and consider the workload gone into digging the tunnels, you know, creating the mosaic, collecting the shells, it's a lot of work to sort of comprehend. And as far as the museum's concerned, um, you can tour the grotto and then there's a lovely shop upstairs, isn't mm. there? And there's um, like a kiddies uh, learning area or, or an information yes, area? Yes, yeah, so we, we've got, we call it the museum room. Um, we've got pencils and there's a little activity sheet for children. We've got lots of information on the grotto, different shell artifacts that we've collated over time. Um, we've got a bit of an archive of the grotto that you can look at and a newly installed mosaic magnet board, which we're Oh, lovely. Fond of. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Come and have a look for yourself. I, I, you won't be disappointed. It's just... Ah, oh, well, it's just taken my breath away, really, because it's... The detail is just amazing. The history is amazing. And, uh, well, the story's amazing. Well, I hope you've liked this episode. Um, as certainly as much as I've enjoyed making it, I've found it fascinating. If you have, uh, please like and comment. Um, and if you'd like to see more episodes, then subscribe to the channel. Uh, and in the meantime, all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.